questions that you want to ask? No. <laughs> Don't all ask me that. <laughs> Experience like when you walked into a store and saw an entire shelf full of yourself in the miniature. Okay. <laughs> but it was an experience when they made it. They came to the studio and before making up and shooting on that day, and they put a ceramic bastards. And eventually they came back for a proof on the doll. And it looked just like a ferret. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but this was before Farah, right? Before she was? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she was, she was an actress. Yeah, she was a young. She was married to me. My other son, his brother, is he also does stunts and he also does creatures. And he's got one of the foster So, so <laughs> it's what was it like with the ceramic? What did you ask me about that? Like, you <laughs> the, ceramic. the ceramic thing? Well, I've heard of um, being a part of the, the creature acting world. Uh, you build those relationships with the creature houses, like Legacy of Facts, and they, you know, they build all these amazing like monster outfits, big facial prosthetics and stuff. So the in-depth ones that I've been privy to myself and or sort of other people, that when the curing process of the plaster strips goes on, it actually cures hot. So it does heat up a lot. And I've heard of people pass it out. Oh. <laughs> and so now what they end up doing is they'll, they have spotters and they'll have a rail around the side because they could not be like the whole upper body more so. The plaster your head and your neck, and then they'll start plastering the board. Okay. So then everything starts to heat up. So people kind of freak out. We have like this little straw sticking out of your nose. <laughs> and you breathe through that. And just come down. Sometimes they play music. <laughs> or if they don't like it, then they just leave it alone and remember themselves. <laughs> but yeah, so they have been having these bars for you to kind of hold a certain area. So it's a long fall. So why do they have their body? Three people, including you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do they do to your body before they get the stuff on? Do they? Um, yeah, they, there's a little bit of lather. They also suggest they become like shaven. So if you have like chest hair or fat hair, yeah. because once that's on there, it's coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The most frugal. Yeah, it gets really, it gets sticky. <laughs> I was actually not here, but I was not laying down. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure that you do, you have done your own stunts in Brian. Yeah, some, some, but not some. Okay, one, one story, John. 
there, there is a I don't know which show it was. I remember things, I remember, but I don't remember this part of this show and then, you know, I remember that events outside of the episodes. So you might remember the answer to this. Um, when, I think it might be, was it only three, maybe? We filmed it at this hotel that had a, um, an awning over the entrance. The awning had plants up on it. And Jimmy jumped out of the, of the second story window, and the second three story window, and landed behind the plants. And then ran around between the planets and jumped off onto the ground from that one story thing. And so we set it up because usually when there's a job, we have to have more than one shot. And they cut, and then it's three days, my stunt double doing, doing the whole fall. And it's just, in this case, they were able to keep it a single shot because she did the jump out of the window, landed behind the, the plants, and then where I was hiding. <laughs> and then I popped up and then off the lining onto the, um, onto the bag. Yeah, it's a one story job. And so that was like, I think it was cool for us. But I still have to do the thing. What's the most thing? Dangerous scent that you have to <coughs> Well, <laughs> it wasn't intended to be that dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's the helicopter. Some of you probably heard the oh, helicopter. Yeah. It's in Phoenix. <laughs> um, we were shooting in Las Vegas at a. Uh, it was new, I think it was the last one. Oh, that's it. Anyway, I think it was the new hotel. It was many, many stories. And. <laughs> Sorry, media. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry about that. I feel like I need to shrink down now and run away. <laughs> um, and it was, it was in late afternoon, and in Las Vegas, oftentimes the wind comes out a little really strong in the afternoon. And we were using a helicopter, and the scene was some of you may remember when Jamie tried to get a bad guy, he did a helicopter, she jumps up and grabs the skin of the helicopter and climbs the big sky. Lands in the big sky. We did it during the day where my stunt double was uh, tethered, wired. So the, and she was holding on to the skid where the, the helicopter was trying to shake her off. Trying to shake, turn off. It's a big. Then, because from late, very late on, she had to come back. It was like 4 p.m. or 5 and the sun started to go down. We had to bring up a lot of explosives. So, <laughs> and, I, uh, so, so they said, let's, let's go, we're going to take you out of the house, hold on the skin, we're going to take you out, uh, I just jump four feet over the bed, and we've made longer jumps to this, don't worry about it, and, and I, I said, well, yeah, okay, so I looked around, waiting for the guy to come strap me up and put, put me on the wire, the safety wire, and he says, well, we don't have time, we're just going to take you a little bit over, so I said, you're going to lift this thing up, and I'm going to grab the skin, and you're going to lift me up, and without it, it's like we're losing the sun. And I, I just, like, fine. And so they took up, because I thought, I've done the storage jobs, and it's not going to be that So they, they lifted up, and I held, I held on to it, and it was just the wind. And we're on the top of the building, so you know, the wind comes like this, and it hits the side, so it happens oh. somewhere, right? So it goes up. But there's still more wind pitches, so it's all <coughs> sideways. And it, 
push the helicopter to the side. And I and I'm speeding out the airbag is now over there. Oh. And here and the helicopter kind of keep raises itself to try and get out of the new rafts to be hit by the middle of the building. So they were going higher. And now they're trying to keep over. So now I'm seeing the airbag <laughs> going like this under me and I'm way up. And I was just out the finally. I heard the megaphone. They were yelling, saying, okay, we've got it, we've got the shot, we need it. I don't know where you've got a good shot. This is my face got me going. They got over at the bag as much as they could, and that was probably about the story. 10 feet story, something like that. So maybe, yeah, so maybe I was at least two stories up, maybe. And it was kind of there, but it was going back and forth a little bit. And they said, go, we'll go. And, I'm, and I, I was trying to go, and my hands did not want to go. <laughs> my hands was literally like somebody else was able to. I was told they were just they were dissing from my consciousness. And I was now swearing at them. <laughs> and eventually, they let go. And I hit, I hit the corner of the air and just rolled on to this. And everything was fine. I was like, boom, that was too sick, you know? <laughs> They're all laughing. And there was a cloud, we started clapping, some lower bosses, so we called them lower bosses, and then it says, okay. And I don't know if this is out of it, because I feel like I'm going to bring down the crowd now that you're safe, because that's something you're doing a good thing, and you're not safe. And so, the weather happened to be there that day. And I looked, I looked over at him, and I just, he cut the air. <laughs> so he said, you know, let's go in the, 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 the stairwell to go down into the hotel, because the doctor was this kind of little thing behind the door. So we went in there, and I sat down, and I started crying, and I got back, pulled myself together. Finally, I said, what was he talking about? What was all that about? And she said, we have to be. It was pretty funny. I said, what did I do? And she said, when you held your nose. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> she said, that's what you used to do when we gave you dying last <laughs> time. And you were so afraid of the high and the high. You were fine on the low chain. Yeah. Yeah. On the guiding. Every time you hit the high and the high, you were fine on the low chain. You were fine on the low chain. Every time you hit the low chain, you were fine on the low chain. Every time you hit the low <laughs> oh, gee, I was sitting there on the computer and died. Uh, this is exactly what you did. So I went completely out of my mind for that <laughs> So when we walked out to the stairwell, the stairwell thing, and everybody was looking at me, and I said, No big deal. I've got to keep you guys laughing. You guys are total credit. I did it. So you should take credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you, Dorian. Any crazy stunt stories? Yeah, all the stories. Most, 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 um, I did a photo shoot for Vogue magazine and they did it on a stuntman and I ended up doing a bunch of stunts in one day. And I feel like that, the complexities of that are slightly different than doing like, he says, oh, today I'm jumping off you know, a building, but your entire day is dedicated to that one stunt, right? So all your focus, all your attention, all your team, team and support is based on successfully executing this one thing. So for me, there was that photo shoot and we ended up doing like a multiple different stuff within one day. So it was a time of rush, so therefore everything was successful. I had a little bit of um, uh, burn damage. So I was ended up jumping off the Sixth Street Bridge downtown. Uh, I ended up running through and jumping through a big uh, eight by 10 inch of glass, shattering that. And then I was jumping between train cars, from car to car. And then an air ram, which is like, <clears throat> like fly people up in the air, like an explosion habits for war movies, right? You get that pistol to launch with you up doing that. And then I got uh, set on a uh, fire 
So all that was, and then and then Sarah fell down on that same bridge. Um, it's downtown Los Angeles. So all those stunts were done in one day for this photo shoot. But in that, it was just like, okay, great, we're going to do this turf fall. Do this. Oh, by the way, that's boop, boop, because there was a homeless person earlier that hesitated on the stairs. Jumping off the building. The funny part about jumping off the, the sorry, not the building, the, uh, the bridge was I had a friend of mine come because I knew they were understaffed and he was just going to be there as like more support, safety support for stunts. And he came by the whole lane back in the field. Hey, come up with me. They're just shooting from down and around. And it's this kind of profile shot. And you see, you know, jumping off the bridge. And he's just this full silhouette of my shadow. And, uh, and they just hold my feet when I'm on the brake. So that way I can balance and they can make sure it's all good. And then you let go and back up and then go down. But we didn't have a lockup. Like there was no security on the bridge itself. So live traffic was going on the bridge across the way. So you see my friend, he's kind of out of down, holding my feet like this. And I go, all right, I'm ready, good. Three, two, one. So I let go. He's like scurrying away down the way. You know, I think he just scurries away and I fall down. Been successful. We're good. I don't have to do it again. I go, hey man, that's great. And you'd be so stupid. You have no idea what happened. And freak this lady out. <laughs> he goes, I let go. And as I'm screaming away, he sees this lady driving down. And she just sees a man screaming away. And this other guy jump up. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, you gotta be ready. They might be calling the cops. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then my brother, my younger brother, when I got lit on fire, and uh, I got a little bit of like sin burning going to chase my ears at that time. And then luckily that was the only thing that happened. But he was supposed to be there kind of as a safe backup, too. And my that other friend that was there as one more support, he says that Alice was like, didn't do anything. And he kind of froze. Just said, like, hey, it's gonna be pretty big. I'm like, okay, like you know, we all hate like, the fire. We're gonna be gelled up and you know, very protected. You guys are on uh, fire extinguishers and ready to go. This whole thing was huge. You know, hey, when you put me out, I'll just lay down and then you guys come do it. As soon as they lift me up, he's like, like his eyes just got really big and he just froze. Like he didn't really do anything. And then. It worked out good. I didn't know it was going to be that big. <laughs> it's just like, me neither. But so I think all those steps that we ended up doing, it was a lot at one time. So to me, that was how I see it being the most dangerous. Whereas other people like, oh, you can love one day. Right. Because you have less time to prepare for it. Yeah. 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 Um, this is the thing. Which ones do you think? Which one? Yeah. I don't, I don't have a one, but if you were going over, like, there's, there's certain ones that have like a memory to it, right? So the Silver Surfer job was for Doug Jones, actually. It's the second film we've done together. We did a movie called Time Machine, which is in 2001, Guy Pierce was starring that. Yes. And that was when I first got my uh, uh, creature. Uh, feet wet <laughs> in that world because I got called and said, hey, you're tall and skinny, you're claustrophobic. No. It's not something this other tall and skinny guy named Doug Jones. I'm like, who? <laughs> so I ended up doing that and we became friends. And we didn't totally stay in touch yet because it was just a building in that relationship. And then a little while passed. And then like, I think it was a year, year or two later, they, you know, I heard the Silver Service thing was coming around. You know, they had started talking about like the diesel season the guy, he's kind of somebody super, you know, buff is it. I didn't know who they had passed at the time. And then I got called to go, uh, I said, hey, you should go, you know, they're looking for fitting for a sun guy to be in some suit. And I'm like, suits are cool. So I, I knew it was for the show, but I was assuming it was for the Silver Surfer. So I showed up like 45 minutes early at Delhi down the street from the Creature Effect shop. And I was like, I'm going to be so ready, I'm super early, having coffee. I drove it. I don't know, six to seven years. This guy learned. Yeah. And, you know, it's in pretty good condition. I was tinkering or something. And I was like, cool, I got 20 minutes. It's like a two minute drive. So I'll be super early. I get in the car and I'm like, oh, and I'm like, you've got it. It's <laughs> summer. And so I go, I'm not missing it. I'm not. So I freak out and I just start running. 
I run like multiple blocks, get there, I'm drenched to sweat, and I come hang up. I'm like, I'm through the, I'm through the And they're like, you're fine, you're good, you're good, you're good to go. They're like, man, where have you been? You have auditions of all these other people. You're the perfect body type for this thing because the actor's Doug Jones. And I'm like, dude, I just worked with this guy. And so that was like my next thing. And then being a part of the Silver Surfers, like I served, like, there's a friend of ours named Tuma Jay in Malibu in California, and he has a surf shop, and I used to work there before, you know, like, um, after high school, I was just at, like, a side job of selling and so forth, and printing out surf gear, so I was like, I always paid for that thing. So being a part of Silver Surfer and being kind of, like, in that realm, that was, like, a super epic moment for me. Yeah, that was awesome. That's, that's the story, yeah, that I saw. What was it like raising was he a wild child? <laughs> <laughs> was he always doing stunts? Well, I think I like the And I think even I was like, you know, I think he was kind of up to the bottom. I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is the process that I think it wasn't even really difficult. I mean, every time we come to the legal inspection, the funny thing about us is our communication. Whereas Alice is four years younger. And when we got older enough to the point where we tried out, and instead of just saying no, we tried out, it's just like, I know it's and we'd have these conversations, and Alex was with me. What she meant was, <laughs> <laughs> and then during the sick talk, and I'd say, Wait a minute, and Alex says, No, mom, what he meant was, which is the middle point in the middle of the time. So, I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, it was just frustrating with the editor, they were saying that. But they got you encouraged. Did you encourage him to go into acting, or did you have any reservations about him wanting to be a son? Uh, well, their father is a son. So that, fortunately, I've been around it enough in my life. Um, to where I was aware of how much to see how much. I mean, it's, it's really It's not Alex. It's not Alex. Right. Or he crazy guy. I mean, it's calculated. It's almost like he makes it yes. But so most people can ask us a question. It's not. There are certain things that they can't But there's smart. So. Really bothered me. They both were kind of interested in acting. They both chose to go out and see what they were up to. I think they're actually in the market. I think they're going to get the production. But I didn't have to be really interested in it. I wanted them to find out what they were doing. I probably had to have a different kind of thing. You probably don't remember even right then. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of. Impressions because, like I said, they're not or kind of go either way, but the different ways of playing. It's not just all funny games kind of deal. We have to play after and work against it, regardless of whatever the worst shape might have been. So, hoping you still have to get through that door and to prove your, prove your worth, you know, in it. So, um, I definitely took that as part as the time to work. Well, you So, it was kind of something major to I didn't want to be an access to all the time. So we did have a meeting with the meeting that we had to work. And this is a trade off that um, I was not really in a race car. The season trailer, right? my trailer was toys, things, <laughs> pictures of plastic on, on the walls and stuff. It was their trailer. I had a little section in the back. You know, I did make up here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were really involved. And then when I had to travel, we had to do a lot of traveling because I'm in 
And so, so it's just fun. It's great. It's a lesson. So I think by the time they came into their profession uh, in, that, in that way, in the was this whole thing that I got. And it was like, oh, this is great. I'll go look at the culture that we They were songs about communicating to people through this. Uh, I think people have to go through that initially before when you start communicating. But it was and it was like going on the set. No, it just was kind of making sure that the normality that it ended up being for us was, I guess, the difference between something that kind of had to be from scratch. Yeah, you know, for us, I guess we saw all the circuits, right? This was a big circus all the time. Right? The tents and the honey wagons and different stuff. And that, that place is very familiar to me. So, you know, when people are like, wow, this is so different. I'm like, no, this is just kind of like, it, It's very simple. Like, hey, hey, we're over here. Oh, time to go eat. All right, let's go get the lunch line. Like, it's really, yeah, it, it, it's, it's like it's, it's like a second group. And before we turn it over to the audience to ask questions, we're going to take out and have one more question. Um, what is the craziest fan ride challenge you've ever been a part of? Or like the most rewarding fan interaction? Well, the craziest. And big crazy banquet. She keeps everybody all dressed up. Steve's myself in the ladies' room and hand and a piece of paper and a pencil of the book under the <laughs> 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 And I'm sitting there quite And I'm thinking, okay, I'll give you some DNA. <laughs> And then so cricket. So I ended up on my nose. Cricket. This little devil showed up on this one. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 Would you please wait until I'm around? <laughs> 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 I think we don't do that one. <laughs> Um, Set their hand in the bathroom stall. <laughs> well, those, those are stunt stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't really had a very long time doing this. I guess since the Star Wars stuff started in the gaming conventions, you know, stunts are always, you know, you're behind the scenes. You know, you're not supposed to be just creating the magic. Thing, you know, hey, cool, you jumped off the building, I'm fine, but you get to go home. And everybody else has to stay there for six hours. So, um, but I think there was a there was a time where it's depending on you, you want to be acknowledged, I think, for like the hard work and effort that you do. And for the stunt thing, and it was always so, you know, this flashes in perspective, right? There was, yeah, hard to So, in that, you never really get the full thing where you do great, they're like, got perfect moving on, and you don't even get a high five. But I was on um, the reboot of Robocop. I did it, so I was there. the main fight double, uh, um, movie double for Joe Kennedy on that, and that was a cool, cool card thing. Mm -hmm. Great one, but that was awesome. And they had this really just intense training fight montage sequence that we did, and it was with the punches used. Other stunt guys, they were in mocap suits, they were supposed to be throwing the ball around into the field. And I just worked so hard on that sequence, which was just dead by the time we ended up shooting in. I mean, we should have shot it at least like 40 times. It was, it was just over and over. Camera and camera and was just trying to make this movement. It's just being really precise. And they had hired a movement consultant, kind of choreographer for the other drug people. He was kind of there for us, but it's like I kind of, it's like kind of did my own thing because that's why I got hired. But he came up and in the room, he was a dance performer and a choreographer for that. He came up during the shooting of that. It was towards the end that I was just super exhausted. He was Hey, I just want to say that I'm really admire you. <laughs> and then I went, yeah, and it just it was just the dance for the moving choreographer from for the movie. So he was teaching real quick about it and all yeah. stuff. But then I just kind of like, thank you. And it was because by the end of it, when we had finished shooting that sequence too, I would 
the last, I don't know, the last two takes, they're like, you're not finishing the take. And I was because we would, I had these, you know, these guns that were super heavy, that were shooting blanks, grabbing guys and getting them, rip their heads off and punch, kick and in the suit. And, you know, it is all a one shot deal going through this maze and fighting falling on the ground. By the end, he's supposed to come around and do kind of this thing, shoot, and then turn around and go. And I would go, <laughs> my heart literally couldn't lift themselves because I was that exhausted. They're like, you can't lift it. I was like, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's just gonna get, you lose it. You're like, I don't know what else this tells you. I'm not superhuman. I'm in the best shape of my life right now, anyway. And I still, like, I only have so much. So it was cool to, like, have that kind of peer acknowledgement from somebody in such a tip. So it was really cool gratifying for me. Okay. Anyone from the audience have any questions? Please make your way to the microphone. Is this a, okay? Yes, uh, I hate or, I hate using microphones. Um. I know bionic one was, was just a job for a year, but did you ever get into the bionics or get kept up on the bionics since uh, uh, developed in the past, ever since that <laughs> six million dollars in the bionic woman? Yeah, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's because it was just a job for me, and it actually was just a job for me. And uh, it, it was a lot of things to me. And yes, it was a job, but <clears throat> I just didn't have to climb the pool and I started doing movies, taking movies right away. And then I had Dorian and then I had Alex, so now I'm working full time and raising two kids. So, and it's not always a passion for me, so I don't need to keep up on it. But I did, uh, was able to, there was research obviously going on already. And, I was able to go one time and see where they had gotten so far with uh, pain. And so that was pretty fascinating. At that time, it could only hold 15 pounds because, oh, and it had an automatic release. On it, I think it fell when they were to, to 50 pounds because if it was more than 50 pounds, it would just fall right out of this. So, um, that was all I was able to do. See, go and see. Uh, that was right after my illness. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. I have a question. Actually, I have two questions. So you were talking about the kids and stuff growing up on set and stuff like that. I'm sorry, can you speak a little louder? Hey, how are you? Thank you. Yeah. So, so my question is this. All the all stuff and stuff you said were captured and stuff. And my eye started, it's kind of changed. So is there, as far as technology and stuff, as far as stunts and safety, is there anything that you wish you have had then that he has now. I think it's actually a very good question. And just, I think it's probably hard to answer because from my perspective, my role, they would only stop things that we could accomplish with what we had. So as time went on, they were able to do more complex, more unusual things than we could do because we couldn't do them. Right. So that's the thing that you can get my question. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got some cool answers. <laughs> I think your name's Alex. No, Alex is my brother, so it's all right. I'm Dorian. Dorian, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, Question for you, being a stuntman. Have you ever pushed yourself in a stunt too far and after the technique, you're like, I'll never do that again? Like, I know it's calculated. It's yeah, no, that's a very good question. That happens actually, uh, I want to say that happens a lot, but it does happen. 
for me where uh, it might also be like a bucket list. Like for me, when I did that fire burn, I successfully did it. It came away, you know, with just a little bit of scissors. And I'm like, cool, check. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because the, the, you know, the risk calculation on that. I mean, if you're set up correctly with the right people, but it's also, you know, fire is so unpredictable that I've seen and a lot of other people, including my, my daddy and my brother, have had a fire burn step in my palm and third degree burns and grafts and things like that. So those those type of senses knowing what is possible. Like what is it worth? Do I really you know do I have a little bit more proceedings and I could just dip into that instead of having a table spread. Um, stuff like that definitely is is the case for me. And also like you said, knowing what not to uh, put myself into because that was really close. We should do that again. Um, I think the fire burning thing is my main one because that's just terrifying to me. <laughs> Honestly, as a mother and somebody who knows the business and trusts that community, I couldn't be happier. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is one that I would be worried about because it's just, you know. Thank you all so much. So, what motivated you to continue as a step? Um, well, I guess my, my transition from having the moistness background into the creature of vegetable uh, is is that is that mix between the two of us. Like my dad and and her, right? Because he had done stuff yeah, acting well, but you know, instead of kneeling to to the stunts later on in his career. Yeah, I guess science kind of like this, this action acting if you will, as, as a creature or a robot or as a human. So I think that turned this to me. It's still more creative on that side. It's like, it's, it's, you know, even kept things it's acting creature character that I've ever done. That, that right. point, it's doing the original dialogue and that we're birthed in the corporate voice. But, you know, it's basically I'm coming in and I am the character and the voice is sprinkled in after. And so that path was kind of led me to be inspired by what are the cool creatures you do next? You know what I mean? What are the aliens like going to do? And I've been able to express that physically more so than just verbally with my voice. So I think that's a kind of thing um, Because I got called for um, something that I didn't pan out the day. I got called for the show. I'm sorry, I can't say Got myself. But it didn't work out. That would have been really cool to be that character and something like So, yeah. He's known not very wide, or at least the only expenses in the audio. <laughs> and that's, that's something that actors have to think it's part of the acting system as well. <laughs> they see the character, the way they walk, the way they see the characteristics, the things they do, unconscious. They are um, things that, if you're gay, you get into your, put that into your character. So that's a whole aspect of what you use all the time. <laughs> Okay, I've enjoyed your work so much. I saw when Jack came home last night, and that was excellent. My question for you is almost in the just a little bit. Is that up there? Yes, okay. thank you. I saw when Jack came home last night. Oh, that was what you did. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Of all the Bionicle villains, did any of them give you a struggle? Because I know which one used to scare me as a kid. So I was wondering if you have a favorite villain you fought against. Did any one of the villains do you want to be? Uh, um, which one was your favorite? Your favorite villain? <laughs> because with the technology as it was when the show was being produced, the fembots okay. were the freakiest ones to do. <laughs> That's true with I mean, probably everybody was <laughs> Everybody was really good. Six of them. Well, Alec actually wanted to use the computer. But it was just a computer. 
That's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, favorite as in either, either, you know, what kind of technology or it's just this, what made it you know, enjoy it? Yeah. Just your, your superhero and growing up, your character was one of the strong characters for the girls. Yeah. So it's just something to think about, and I was curious. As well. No, I think it's, it's a sensible question. I don't know if it's a sensible answer. That's okay. But I, I just, everything was its own unique experience. Everyone that we want. So it's hard for me to compare, to compare them because it was, they were usually so different. Um, and I was learning it young as a And I hadn't done all that much as with an adversary. So to think about this is that prior to that, there was just a lot of that kind of action for me. So I was learning with each one. I think that's why I, I can kind of compare them because I learned from the people um, about finding that kind of interaction. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and think about that. <laughs> we have a few more minutes for a couple more questions. A couple of questions. My brother, Katie, out of Utah, told me if I didn't ask this question, you would come back and get me. Um, one of your episodes was working with Eagle Kadeem. My brother went to high school with Eagle Kadeem when we want him. <laughs> So he wanted to know what was your experience of working with Gable Knievel on that one episode? <laughs> and two, could you talk a little bit about Max the Bionic Dog and some of your experiences with him? <laughs> I had to ask the second one because I haven't talked about it. Well, he was a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Yeah, yeah, which one? Which one? And with that necessary. Because he would win that. He would win that. I couldn't use the word favorite. <laughs> but one of them is outstanding. Yeah, he was, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, we were filming at scene where the bad guy was in the and I had to jump on the back of his wife's mind and ride him and zoom up the canyon to go where we were going. And we were supposed to, we were shooting my shot, my well, was doing. I'm shooting a shot where I just put on the helmet and jump on the back and we just take off. And taking off meant looking on the right, just moving out, you know, 15 feet, get out of the camera, just with all into the back, stunt up against on the back of the bike. And they do the big bike of the not bike, flight of the canyon. And the camera says, follow and chase us through that whole thing. Yeah, Brad. So, <laughs> wasn't that a clean word I think? <laughs> um, he, we jumped on the bike, we took off, and he zoomed up that so fast that I was absolutely and completely terrified. It was was it as bad as the helicopter? I'm not sure. <laughs> and I found myself involuntarily streaking at him, counting him on the back, <laughs> telling him to stop, and swearing. He got to the top and went, that wasn't so bad, was it? Turn around. <laughs> when I got when I got to the bottom, I just you know, I got off the bike and I said, what? Oh. Now this is the <laughs> intention of the drill. <laughs> New jeans, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I hanged in my room and then just was, you know, they beat up my couch because they wanted to be hip up. So, um, things like that. I'm not on the show that time. So, yeah, so that answers two questions. <laughs> okay, nice question. Why don't you. Um, we're just two, just two um, experiences of good or bad with Max. The well, own. no, the, the, the original Max was there was many dark masks. The original Max was to me, he was almost one of those masks. And he had, he had that, that's all. 
the other, the other dogs, because they have stun dogs, like one with Indian fire, one with Indian jumping, you know, one is hunting turrets, and then there's the African dog. So all the they were big dogs. I did not know this thing, so. Wow. And, and was the original one to be the Italian humans, and by command, because it, it is junior, had, you know, um, his trainer trained him with this dog. And the other trainer that had all these other dogs that were movie trained uh, were, they were trained with certain types of commands and they would always be focused completely on the, the trainer. And so, if you're down with the other dog, he would find him. We do it over here, so he would come and he would snuggle with me when I could talk to him and he responded to me. The other dog had, when, when no longer was this guy working with us, and we used that fellow's dog, he had liver pate on the cheek, oh. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff just to get him to come up with that, like, you know, with me, and pretend like he was <laughs> So, it's hard on him. <laughs> just stuff like um, I had just a question, quick question for both of you. Um, Doreen, if you wouldn't mind, would you share your favorite line and character from Mandel Green? You'll never know. <laughs> uh, no, I think it was no, I'm still fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, the whole street that I have right now is. I got it in Oxbury Farm in California when they were doing the Western shows and you can actually buy these holsters and you can buy a replica of revolvers that, you know, look for the much blanks and then practice with my dad out in the yard and trying to get on. Uh, and he's had the Western movie ever since so he did and they were able to do it and then got this and they were like, oh, we need to teach you a great job. It's like, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very fulfilling. It took like 30 years to do it, but it's <laughs> And um, I was going to ask you, I was watching back the first time by a woman and so this million dollar man episodes recently, and I realized that as a young girl, it was one of the first really genuine love stories that I watched. I was really into. So what was it like working with um, Lee Majors? Oh, you know, people think we had a lot of a lot of relationship, but these shows were so ruling. I mean, we could show up, I mean, we didn't have to, yeah, we have, I would take it out kind of combined with a little bit of a thing. We just didn't have a relationship until after the series was over. And when they started coming out, he and I became friends um, after, after the show was over, we would be on the DVDs. So he was here to um, because also he lived out of state. So we just never really developed the relationship. And it was tough, you know, so it was really a lot. We had 12, 15 hour, 16 hour days. So we were just, hi, how are you doing on this You know, <laughs> great acting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It's weird. It comes like we have this, this little mechanism in it. Turn that camera to you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on my fifth year. <laughs> and uh, so, so we got through it. It's a big stop. Okay, we stop at both of us a Not that all shows aren't, but some just lend themselves more to, to be able to help. So thank you. I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm going to have to wrap it up now. Everybody give a look.
Oh, please.